Well, okay, I'll probably screw this up because I don't work with Photopea a lot, but um, mm -hmm. uh, I can leave this palette here. I'll just leave it here for now. We'll just wing it. So I'm going to go to Photopea, mm -hmm. and you'll probably get a page like, um, well, let me just go back and refresh. Something like this. Um, I'll start a project. I'm going to go to print over here and choose letter size just so I know I can print it. It just automatically does 300 dpi, which is great. And I hit create. So uh, with the move tool selected here, just click on this transform controls. Um, just so I'll show you what that does. Just gives you these boxes so you can size things. You'll need that for later. But I'm going to go to text first off and you want to click this box for local fonts. It'll ask you, is that okay? Yes, um, just to access the fonts you have on your computer so you don't have to use just the default ones. And I'm gonna choose one that I like uh, called Beach Cake, which is sort of that retro thing. Now the size, I'm gonna make it way bigger than this. It only let you go up to 150, but you can type in whatever you want. I'm gonna try 300 to start. And I've got it set, the next thing is blue, so I can just keep that blue. That's your color and then your justification. Just for, I'm just doing one word so it doesn't matter. So I just hit OK. And then I'm going to click anywhere and I'll get my font created. And I've got my caps lock on. And I'll type in student. Still a little bit small. But I'll go up to my move tool again. And now see I've got these boxes. That's why I want those. So that I can make this larger. And just grab a corner. Make that a little bigger now where the magic comes in, I suppose. Um, this is actually pretty good in here. I have to kind of do it manually. But in here, you go back to your text tool with this selected. Hit the little T here. And up at the top, there's a warp group. You hit that. And then we're going to choose on this one, flag. You can play around with all these. You know, they're pretty uh, awesome what they do. They do a pretty good job. You just sort of drag these sliders around. It's generally just the top slider. You can play with the other one and see what it does, but it's just kind of like goofy effects. You might want them, you might not. So I'm going to X out of that. But I'm going to go back to warp. And two that are similar is the um, the wave and the flag. The wave just sort of tries to keep, um, I think that's the one. If I go back to zero on this. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go slow. So we're relearning while I'm doing it. That one kind of like bulges one side, but kind of keeps it flat. Now, sometimes that's something that people are going for. Um, it's harder to get it to do down. Um, you have to end up doing it. It's, it's a pain in the ass. You have to go to another group for that. But um, anyways, uh, cancel again. Anyways, so we're going to go to flag. It's the one I'm going to use for this example. I'm going to flag there. And that's sort of the look you're going for. So depending on which way you want it to go, you know, you can have it go this way or something like that. And then you can say, okay. And if we go back to the, um, to the move tool at the top, you could you know, scale it up and down. Now, if you want to make it taller without making it wider, you hold down the shift key and that'll let you sort of stretch it like that. You know, if that's the look you're going for, make it a little taller. Um, that just allows you to choose to move one um, length or width separate from each other. So then we can just, um, over on the right hand side, over here, is, you'll see this is the layers panel. And there's a little eyeball there to show. So you got your background and you got this. I'm going to right click student and just duplicate that layer and then I'm going to drag it down um, just below here and then I'm just going to like sort of triple click into there until I get my cursor and I'm just going to go back and type in council and it looks at it works that these two words are roughly the same size um, you know so that anyway so that's that now as far as color we could go up to the text and let's just see we'll start with this one we got council selected over here I can go and just change the color of this one to pink like the whole thing to pink but let me see if the best way to do this is to select individual letters we could probably just do this yeah I mean this is an option you'll see that that one's a separate color you know we could just go cut we could this is probably a good way to do it um, yeah, you could just do it letter by letter like that. I mean, alternatively, what we would have to do is 
make this uh, into separate shapes and that would sort of uh, it, that's probably the easiest way to do it it's just do letter by letter otherwise if you go and say rasterize this right click it and now we're gonna make it it's not text anymore it's just gonna be pixels so it doesn't know that it's text anymore now that it's just a picture to it um, I could go probably and take where's my paint bucket tool there's the gradient I'll right click on there yeah, yeah paint bucket tool yeah so now if I were to choose a color like say this purple up here could I go in the council layer and just click on a word and see if it will oh that's the color I've got selected let's try something that we don't have up here orange yeah you could do that too and then I could just go and grab like another color here this blue and click on that one so you could do it either way um, turn it into a picture and then just use the paint bucket tool to select different colors now the way I did it over on the other um, software is I had this color palette and basically I'm using my my dropper tool to pick that color off and so I can just tap on uh, like a, a letter and with it selected I can just hold down I and just change the color by clicking on any color that I want to anywhere on the screen I can make it this gray I can make it this this red over here in my um, in my group you can pick any color off of anywhere on the screen but anyways um, what what you can do over here I suppose in Photopea would be um, let's see probably go if you wanted to reuse this blue and keep it relatively the same instead of choosing a color here you can click it and then um, go out here in the world it's the same thing I say I want to make it this orange so now you've picked up that orange you can see it's loaded into your thing and then with your paint bucket selected you could click and turn that to orange and so now say I want to make this you that green so I need to pick that green up and so I'll go to this and click on that green and now that green is loaded and my paint bucket is still selected so now I've made that a different color so that's how we did that and the flowers I mean you could find one online you can just go to um, somewhere and just say like flower uh, 60s clip art or something like that and there are some sites that are like um, what do you call it um, there's a site called cleanpng.com or something like that where you can find stuff like this but I can right click this and copy I'll go back into Photopea and go to edit and paste and do what I yeah, allow it's only asking me these questions now because I um, oops you had to go to a move tool to move around because I uh, deleted my cache on my computer so now it's asking me these questions again it only asks you once so now I've got this flower. I want to put it behind this word student. So what I need to do is over here on the layers panel, just drag it, click it, and drag it down behind student. And you'll see it's back there now. Now on the other, um, I'm going to hold down Alt and roll my mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit. On the other one I did, there was a little white outline around um, these letters to sort of you know do that offset to make it stand out and cut away at that. So we can do that in here. <clears throat> by making a stroke around it what I'm going to do is click on this uh, student layer and I'm going to go up to the menu and go to layer and layer style and I'm going to add a stroke and right now it's trying to do a black one but I'm going to change the color here to white just like that and then I want it to be a little thicker so I'm going to change the size to like right around there hit OK and then so I did that you can um, if you want to do that to the word council you can go and right click on this and um, let's see there should be a copy layer style layer style copy there we go and then go click on council and we can go layer style paste and so it's there you can't see it but what will happen is here I'm going to go back to this flower and I'm going to duplicate that flower and we could do the same thing with it um, oops I got the wrong Control Z is undo. Control Zebra. I'm gonna go to that this copy. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna lock this um, student layer. I'm gonna hit over here and hit this padlock just because it keeps grabbing it and it's getting on my nerves. So that's gonna keep it from. So I'm gonna move it down here underneath <clears throat> this guy. And you see that white border is there because we copied it in there. And so if I want to change, I'm gonna hold down Alt and roll back my mouse wheel again. You can hold down the space bar to get the little hand tool to move your canvas around. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go back to my paint bucket tool and say I want to make the center of that flower green. And so I just clicked it. And then I say I want to make the, um, the petals say um, this blue or something like that. So what I'll do is go to my color and then click on that up here to load it and then just click on each one of these petals and there you go if you end up bringing in a flower or something like um I keep forgetting I'm in the internet already say if you find one here's one no that's not one either I'm gonna find one that's got a background on it um, no I'm looking out and finding all kinds of ones with no background on them SVGs. Okay, surely there's some in here that don't. Let me try it. I'm going to go paste it into Photopea and just see if there's a background on it. Um, edit, paste. Paste. Oh, where'd you go? Oh, no. Move tool. Keep forgetting to select my move tool. Um, it's hard to tell. I have to go up above. No, there's no background. <laughs> uh, usually, like on days where you want, <laughs> when you want something with uh, no background it's impossible to find one let's just sign with something that's going to have like Elmo I don't know I'm just the first thing that came to my head I don't know why we can analyze that later um, maybe something like this you can go copy and if I take that into Photopea and if I wanted that in my design I can edit paste okay so now he's got a definite background to them. You can do a couple things. Um, when you, there's this magic wand here for selecting. It just sort of selects um, backgrounds. I need to um, make the tolerance a little higher. You know, maybe 33% and it's going to grab a little bit more. It's still not getting everything, but they've got a new tool here that works pretty good. I hit select subject and it did a pretty good job. You know, it grabbed a little bit more than it needed to, so that kind of stinks. I could lower the tolerance to maybe 12 on that one and hit select subject again. Oh, I'm going to add now. Just get, um, let's see. I could always go into the quick selection brush and tell it I want to take away this minus here from my um, selection. Yeah, see that didn't work too good. Yeah, it's just a work in progress. I think we can do select, um, go to the magic wand again, and just play around with the select subject. Um, tolerance 10, maybe. Non -pre uh, I'm a non-premium user, so let's try this instead. Um, if we can't get into that background, we're gonna go down here, there's an eraser tool. You right click it, there's a background eraser tool. And I'm going to use my bracket keys, the square bracket keys, next to the P on my keyboard to make the brush bigger. And then making sure that this crosshair there stays in the part I want to delete, I'll click. And it'll find those edges for me pretty well. And I'm just going to go and click. Just keep the crosshair. If I do it here, it's going to see how it took out the eye. Control Z. So make sure the crosshair is in the background color and just sort of click around in the areas that you want to get rid of. You can make the brush smaller by using the bracket keys. Like I'm going to hold Alt again and roll in with my mouse wheel to zoom in there. If you don't have a mouse wheel, there's a there's a tool here at the bottom by the colors, the magnifying glass, and you can zoom in with that too. And then there's a zoom out right there, but it's a lot better if you have a... <laughs> And you can like do control and plus and minus I think works as well. But anyways, I just use the mouse wheel. I'm gonna go back to my background eraser tool, make the brackets to make it a little smaller, and just sort of click on those guys. And that did pretty good. It's that's really gonna it'd be really close up um, to see that. You're not gonna really notice. 
So now we're, we're kind of, well, I need to do it down here. And then now I'm just gonna take the regular eraser tool, right click this the eraser tool, make it a little bigger. And this stuff is away from him, so it's not really that hard to get. And I will just get all this stuff around the outside. I missed a little guy there. So it's not gorgeous, but I got another background eraser down here. Get rid of those little areas. You could just cut the bottom of that off. I wouldn't use an image like this unless it was going to be on the bottom of the screen or something like that. So, um, but I'll zoom back out. Use my space bar to drag that around, and then back at the move tool. So he's, you know, he's cut out and he can be put in front of the. You know, you see how he is. He's in. He's on the top layer, so he's on the top of the stack. So I don't want to talk to you like you're stupid. I don't know if you've, I don't think you're stupid. Obviously, I just, I don't know what your uh, experience is with any of this software. So I'm trying to go basic as I can. But say if I wanted him to be behind the flower, you know, I could just drag him behind that blue flower there. And now he's behind a lot of stuff. But, um, you know, you could make cancel, go back and just sort of rearrange the, the layers of how you want things. But control Z is your friend and get you back to places you've been before. But anyways, you didn't want Elmo in your picture, but I'm just showing you how that works. So if you did get a flower that didn't have a background, uh, or did have a background, you could get rid of it. Um, you can make your own flowers just by making shapes, really. I mean, it's just a series of, you know, circles. And then you've got the color up here. Generally, when you pick a tool, um, like I picked the ellipse tool down here. I right-clicked, and, you know, you have your rectangle ellipse and stars and stuff like that. But um, the top will sort of the way it did with text the, this top layer will be like stuff that has to do with that tool so when I go to the rect or the ellipse wherever it's saying you know what shape you want it to be a shape or a path or whatever you just generally use the shape and this is the color so if I wanted to make a, a blue you know like this flower so like I said I could have made this shape before it's just a little a few extra tweaks I would have had to do just to make it a little bit longer I, I don't really care I like the flowers this shape as well but you would just do something like this and then um, do the same thing and just sort of duplicate it. And then you would have to rotate it, you know, and set them out. You can mm, you can set the rotation point, I think, by a different area so that when you rotate it, it rotates around a different point, you know, and just build a flower. It would put a circle in the middle and then group them all together. You know, if I have these two, and click on one, hold down shift, and click on the other shape, and then um, you can right click, and you don't have to merge, you could merge them, I think you want to put them in a folder, I can't remember how to do them here, it's, con it's control G, but with those two shapes, you can also just hit this little folder down here, and it puts them into a folder, and they're still there, and they're still both editable, and you can still turn them on and off, but just it's just a little easier. It's like housekeeping. You can type this and just say, you know, blue flower. Um, just so you can start to keep track of things, you know. Um, and to be able to move them together and turn them on and off together. I would probably... Um, this transfer of controls automatically selects layers. I would set it to folders so that I can move folders instead of moving shapes. It just gets a little bit of pain. Yeah, sometimes if you have to switch back and forth every once in a while, but... Um, but then you could just go and delete, duplicate that um, folder and then you could go to say edit transform and flip it horizontally which is what we do when we, when we do our tumblers and stuff and then move those two into place and then I would grab that folder uh, oops I hit caps lock instead of shift hold down shift I select that folder and that folder and then put them in a folder <laughs> and so now you've got a folder with two and then we duplicate that one you know you see what I'm saying and flip it vertically and we'd have a full flower you know with eight petals you know if you want to do six you have to do your own that type of stuff but anyways just the way it works um, pretty easy program really uh, this is just like a sort of a dumbed down version of Photoshop but it, it does the job you know, I've used it when I'm at my folks' house or something. I don't have my computer with me, and they don't obviously have any software. But um, if you like it, 
Inkscape is great for doing vectors. It's free. That photo P is obviously free. And I use Affinity Designer, which is epic. I think um, you can buy one program by itself. Um, I think it's worth it to get this program. And then Affinity Photo is sort of like more for editing photographs. And, you know, um, and this is more for graphics. And then there's an Affinity Publisher, which is for laying out books. I'm doing a cookbook right now for my grandmother, and it's awesome. You know, all the tools are pretty much the same, and they can go, um, you know, in and out. And for sublimation, it's really cool because say like I like this this in here. I can say um, open this, edit in, in um, photo, and I mean you can always do clipping masks on top of things and make textures and stuff. But when you do it in here. In photo, it doesn't normally take this long. It's just because I haven't opened the program today. Um, if I wanted to go to this particular, say this in, and I had selected, I could take a brush and find one with like a little pretty texture and some red, make it way bigger, um, too big, and sort of like you know paint like a uh, pretty. You know, on here, I don't have to paint that much. I should have uh, done less, less so than that. But um, anyways, it's you know, it's just painting right on that, on that letter. And you can do clipping masks, and you can do different shades and pretty, and put stars and glitter and shit in there. Um, sorry. Um, and it comes with um, stock photos. So if I just look up glitter. And then, like, I'll get this. I can just drag it out. This is all free, and there's thousands of millions of pictures and stuff. And what you would do is go into your layers and say, um, I wanted to put it over this word. I would drag it over top. Trying to get down past all these groups that I've got. Okay, so as an example, I've just put that into there, and I could go and take that image. It's way big, but I could scale it down. You could do this with the whole word. I just haven't. I haven't. This word is separate right now. So if I were to take this S and all these letters and um. I have to go back into Affinity. I mean, it's a designer. And what I'll do is, sorry, I'm taking so long. I'm trying to give you a decent example of what you could work toward if you wanted to. And take this one. I'm just going to release it for now. Release it, and then I'll take this. Um, join them all together. And then take this glitter and put it over the whole word. There we go. And now I'll take my image and move it. See, now we've created an entirely new effect. You know what I mean? You could, and you could still go in and make it a color, but still have this texture if you wanted to, that kind of thing. But it's a lot. You see a lot of effects in that in the uh, you know tumblers and stuff. But anyways, I've gotten way off topic and talked too much. But um, that's the way things work. Um, Anyway, I'm going to send you this video right now. All right, cheers.